Hi, I am Danielle Hofer and I um, am one of the leaders of Ignite Women and I am, I've actually been the, the um, gal putting up the videos for you to enjoy this Advent season and I just wanted to take a minute and uh, bring to you some verses um, that, that stick out to me as something um, of hope and of God, the character of God. Um, you know, at night, this, or first of all, this season, the season of Christmas is so difficult for me. Um, when I was a kid, I keep thinking about it. When I was a kid, I was so excited. I was so excited at um, just the, there was always snow on the ground. It was always surrounded by family and love and, and people going out of their way to make, uh, to make me feel loved. And, I, and that part of Christmas is what I cling to. And in fact, when I start to see my neighbors uh, put up their lights um, around this time, I get so excited and that nostalgia comes back. Um, but right now, that nostalgia is hard because I am not inside my home recording this. In fact, I am outside in the middle of December in, in, in Indianapolis, Indiana, and there's actually a cemetery behind me. The, sky, the Indianapolis skyline is, is just over there. I know that you can't see because I'm recording on my computer, but I'm outside while my husband has my three children corralled at home. My home is loud. My, ho my home is full of um, needs and wants, and, and I am so grateful for that, but it is not quiet. It is not a place, and I'm in the neighborhood, and there was just a car coming by that, that um, obviously needed a little bit of help too, but what I'm getting at is that there's chaos everywhere. And we have got to find a time to um, soak in God's word and soak in the truth of who he is, especially his character. Um, and I'm doing that right now. And I'm hoping that these videos are giving you that, you know, that five to 10 minute minutes a day for you to just remember, to sit and remember. Today's verse is in Mark. Mark chapter one, verses one through three. Now Mark is one of my favorite authors. If, if you know me in real life and if you, um, or if you follow me, you see that I'm pretty much straight to the point. I like people telling me things straight to the point and I give things straight to the point, sometimes to a fault. But I enjoy Mark's encounter. If you are new to, to um, this thing called Christianity, if you're new to knowing who Jesus is, start with Mark. If you just want to know um, just the, the bullet, like not just the bullet points, but the the directness of who he is. Mark does a great job. So if you would um, follow follow along with me, I'm reading from the NIV version, so if you don't have your Bibles in front of you, that's fine, but I'm going to quickly read for us. The title of the chapter is John the Baptist Prepares the Way for Jesus. Okay, so it says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messengers ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. That's Mark chapter 1 verses 1 through 3. Now, these short messages or these short um, verses may not seem very Christmassy. They may not seem um, very uh, holiday driven. It may not seem very Jesus-y in fact. But I love these verses simply because it shows us three great lessons. The first lesson is that God follows through with what he says. Now, I just read for you, it says, you know, it, it is written in Isaiah the prophet. Well, back when Jen Hand um, did day one, she, was, she went over um, Isaiah chapter 40. And in verse 3, I believe it's, for, yes, verse 3, it specifically says, um, let me grab it for you. It would help if I had it bookmarked. Isaiah verse 3 says, A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Hmm. And then I want you to flip with me also to Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. And again, if you can't, I apologize. It's just second nature to say flip with me. But in Malachi um, chapter 3, it says, See, I will send my messenger, who will prepare the way for me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. He will come. 
All right, so God follows through with his promises. We have not only um, Isaiah's account telling us that there is going to be a messenger that we need to prepare. We need to prepare and make a way. And then we have in Malachi another another account saying, make way. The Messiah hasn't come. Why would we make way um, if the Messiah hasn't come? And then we, here we have Mark. Make way. I will send my messenger ahead of you. Now, if you are unfamiliar with this gospel, the messenger ahead of you is John the Baptist. God prepared a way for Jesus to come. He was preparing the message, or pre preparing the hearts of those that were um, ready to encounter Jesus. Um, because you can't just handle a man who walks on earth, who is perfect, who starts professing, professing things that they've not heard for a while, um, and performing miracles. You would have to be prepared for that. The other thing, um, the second thing I want you to notice is that we have to be prepared with obedience. That these three verses talk about obedience to me. Are we going to fulfill our purpose here on earth? Now, John the Baptist, his purpose was to come and make way for Jesus, to prepare the hearts for Jesus to come. So my question is, are we, gonna are we going to fulfill our purpose? Jesus came and fulfilled his purpose. Now, you could be asking, sitting there and saying, well, Danielle, what is my purpose? I am still, I'm trying to figure out my purpose. I may be, you know, 14 years old watching this and not know my purpose. I could be 80 years old and still not know my purpose, but I have an answer for you. Would you read with me? Again, habit, sorry. Um, in Ephesians 2, I feel, I firmly feel that Ephesians 2, uh, verse 10 answers that question. For we are God's workmanship, and some translations or some uh, newer translations say handiwork, I think, or handicraft, handiwork. But we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. Now, ladies, God prepared in advance for Jesus to come, right? God prepared in advance for us. Now, let me explain. We were born here with a purpose, and that purpose, God has made clear from creation what our purpose is, and that purpose is in Matthew, I believe it's Matthew 22, I will check that in just a second, but it's to go, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and it doesn't stop there. I know we tend to stop there and just say, oh, let's go and make disciples. No, we have to teach them teach them. How do we do that? It looks different for each of us. Some of us may go and actually teach Sunday school or teach a women's Bible study, and maybe that's what your purpose is. Maybe your purpose is living the life you say you believe. And I think that that is what Jesus did. He, he left us a legacy on this earth, living the life that we are supposed to live, and the, the life, the role model, the example of how we are supposed to live on this earth. And he transformed so many lives. We can do that same thing by simply living out what we say we believe. Are we going to fulfill our purpose on this earth? My nose is starting to run. It's starting to get a little windy and the sun's coming and the sun's going down a little bit more. So I apologize for the sniffles in advance. But the last thing, the last thing I think that these verses in Mark say to us let me read them one more time. In the beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you. You will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord and make straight paths for him. The last thing that I get from this is that we can receive. We can be prepared. We can have our hearts prepared. We can be as prepared as possible. Just like our Christmas dinners and our Christmas family get-togethers, we can be prepared as possible. But are we going to receive it? Are we going to receive the goodness that is in front of us? Are we going to worry about something else that does not matter? Are we going to receive, even though our hearts have been prepared, are we, going to, are we going to receive Jesus Christ's salvation that he offers free and clear? All you have to do is believe. Now, for those of us that have been in the faith for a while, 
and been surrendered to Jesus. This still speaks to us today. And why? Because it's a daily and sometimes moment to moment choice to surrender. Some, some days are harder than others. And some days, mm, I just want to be right, don't you? I just want to, I just want to take control and not have to go through the motions. I don't want to humbly submit myself to anyone. I want to be in control because I don't want to deal with my own emotions. I want to move on. But God, but God is so much greater and he calls us. He calls us to humbly surrender to him and we can take that pressure off of ourselves. Whew. Ladies, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that, that we get to do this life with Jesus. I'm so grateful that we live in a country that allows us to, that allows us to worship God with little to no fear. I'm grateful that we have this um, technology that where we can share these Advent videos and be, in, be plugged in with other believers. Ladies, I just ask you, I humbly ask you, that you would find a time this Christmas season to submit. Submit yourselves, humble yourselves to Jesus because he is the reason for this season. Thank you, ladies, and I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas. Bye.